Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Netta Pitt. Netta is the Chief Information Security Officer of the regional retailer Belk. Anybody who lives in America and the South will know Belk very, very well. Probably bought all of their clothes for life and school there at some point. We'll talk more about Belk in a second, and we'll talk really about the work that they're doing on the security side with Netta. But before we get there, Netta, tell us a little bit about you and your career. Yeah, no, thank you. And yeah, you're right. I mean, once you bring up Belk, everybody's like, yeah, I used to go do all my clothes shopping for school there. Yeah. So yep. it's, a, it's a running theme. No, thank you for having me. And I really appreciate, um, you know, our conversation that we're going to have today. So, you know, I, I started out, I, I thought I was going to be a political science major and go into politics and, and, you know, make my way there. And then I realized, wait a minute, I'm going to spend all this money at school and I'm going to not really make any money for a very, very long time. And I don't know if that's the, the right path for me. So I, I started, you know, when I was in high school working at Radio Shack, it sounds trite, but that's how I kind of got into computers and I could speak the language of computers, started my career, my actual official career at American Express. And I was one of those few people back then that could actually talk business and talk technology. So I got yeah. stuck on every technology project known um, that we did. And so that's really where I started my career, um, finished my degree in CIS and, you know, made a couple of jumps throughout different paths, worked at retail for VF Corporation. You know, they do everything from selling to manufacturing to dis distribution. So uh, really understanding security from that whole point of view, soup to nuts. Went to Cisco, helped to revamp their internal security organization and drive them towards, you know, driving towards zero trust internally. And then went to a semiconductor, um, which was a whole nother thing because when you're dealing with a national, a, a commodity that's part of our national security, it's a whole different kind of ball of wax mm -hmm. on skills and, 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 constraints and, and what you have to follow and, and the audits that you have to, you know, kind of jump through. So that was a wide eye opening experience. And I tried my hand at startup that didn't go so well. And so now at Belk back in retail, back in the fun, crazy time of the holiday. And, you know, it's a, uh, that's kind of where I am. I grew up outside of Philadelphia and so I'm a diehard Eagles fan, diehard Phillies fan, even Flyers and, and Sixers. So, you know, you, you don't want to mess with us Philly fans, you know, no, that's pretty definitely much not. Running, I mean, running, I, running I, joke, I, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. I think uh, Philadelphia has cornered the market on the tough fans for sure. Yeah, but, you know, Netta, it's great to hear your background. And it's also so interesting for me to hear the Radio Shack connection because I do think that that's kind of like one of those places that as all the digital world was kind of coming together, those were some of the early computers. Like I remember when I learned how to program, there were two systems you could kind of learn on. A lot of people had those like early Apple, kind of Apple II computers. And then the other ones were all the Radio Shack computers, right? That I remember kind of sitting there learning basic coding. That was the first place right. I learned how to code. So it's no surprise that, you know, people that have that connection then go on to understanding how these systems work and build over time. But now you find yourself at Belk and what an interesting role. I mean, Belk is a company that has a long history, very, very successful history, very very famous brand. And, you know, you're working on an area where that kind of brings them into the digital, I'd say commercial world and really kind of the digital world in general. Tell me a little bit about what you and the team are working on at Belk. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, retail has, you know, during COVID, you know, everybody took a little tightening in the belt. And so we're at a point where we are rebuilding and getting our organization situated so that we, you know, we have a growth trajectory for Belk. We're, we're kind of knocking it out of the park and we plan to do that for the next couple of years, if not longer, right? Because we've reinvented ourselves. And so what we're trying to do is get ourselves prepared for that growth that's that we know is coming. 
and enable the business to run faster. So what I'm doing is trying to figure out, you know, where's our maturity level on different parts of the organization? You know, is it, where's my maturity level when it comes to SecOps? Where's my maturity level when it comes to GRC, when it comes to engineering and architecture, right? And, and how do those all piece together? But not only trying to figure out where our maturity is, but also drive it to service, right? Mm -hmm. In my view, you know, coming from American Express, it was all about ex service, Come, you know, working in Cisco, all about service, right? And how do I make my business run fast by offering them security services, right? So when we think about identity, I want all my developers to develop the best widget they possibly can and not have to worry about how do I tackle and manage the access for that widget? Right. Mm -hmm. You should be able to plug in to a service that gives you that. So really kind of trying to change the mindset at, at Velk right now to, to drive towards security services, those services that the business can plug into and run fast. And then the other thing that we're, we're doing is, again, it's, it's about talking the language and, and making the business understand what security does. Right. A lot of places, security is seen as a, you know, not an enabler for the business. And I want to make sure that we're an enabler. So how do I translate what we do into a risk and how, and what we do uh, mitigates that risk? Then I'm talking the business language and, and yeah. we can have a, a robust conversation. So, yeah, that's really what I'm working on at Belk. And we're driving down a zero trust path and, and program that we're starting to launch beginning at towards the end of this year, which should be in the next couple of weeks wow. and, you know, rolling that out. So that's amazing. And, you know, I know Netta, this is a special time of year for all retailers. Here we are in Q4. We've already yeah. started the holiday sales season in the U.S. You know, I was talking to a group of folks yesterday and I was saying, wow, I remember when I worked with a lot of retailers, we would start having these conversations around Thanksgiving, but man, it starts so early now. You know, so when, early. So when you think about that type of a moment from a security perspective, you know, what kind of things do you have to take into consideration during kind of a holiday season? Yeah, I mean, inevitably, the, the view is can't bring down the stores, right? And so we we are doing that from a patching and vulnerability management approach, right? So that we're strong and we're we're in line with the latest patches and uh, closing any vulnerabilities. And we have that really tightened up and we're, we're driving that. But then it's also looking at, you know, the big items that are out there. Ransomware comes up. You know, fishing is and, and whaling goes through the roof around this time. And so for me, it's not only training our employees not to click on the link at work, but it's also yeah. for them not to click on the link at home. Right. And so when I can make that connection, then they're like, oh, yeah. And, and they 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 kind of buy in a lot more. So it's it's really trying to do a lot around the, the types of fraud that are happening, the types of fraud that happen across everybody, not just businesses, but across them, even individuals at, at home. And, and really just keeping it top of mind that we're always talking security around this time. And, you know, it's, it's the cliche, if you see something that doesn't look right, let us know because we need to quickly check out if it's not you know, something that should be happening. So, you know, we have a lot of people that are, you know, we've kind of built that program over the last six months saying, hey, you know, make sure that you're reaching out to us if there's anything that's going on that doesn't seem right. So, but, you know, the big thing, and, and I don't even want to put it out there because I don't want to have to deal with it, but, you know, it's always ransomware. That's the big thing that we're always, everybody's always worried about anymore. So, so I mean, Right now, when I look out and I speak to your CISO colleagues out there, you know, they highlight different issues. I think during the pandemic, there was a lot of discussion of suddenly you had employees working out of their homes and how do you manage that increased risk? That was a big factor. What are the things that are really top of mind for you in the CISO world right now? 
Yeah, to me, it's, you know, and I, again, I think everybody kind of is pounding this drum and, and I'll be in line doing the same. I think it's the rise of AI and ML. I think AI and ML are amazing technologies, but they're amazing technologies that not a lot of people understand. Um, and they don't understand when interacting with a, you know, a bot, a chat GBT or whatever, right? The data that you put in is no longer your data and is out there in the ether, right? And so you've got to be careful about what you're putting in. So we're trying to educate our organization on that. And then it's also how well has that AI ML been trained? Has it been trained so that there's no bias? Has it been trained so that, you know, you know, it's, it's really pulling the most relevant information and not, you know, information that's on the fray. And then it's also understanding that whether it's a one or a zero can make the biggest difference in what that AI does, right? There's a, uh, NC State did a study they were doing, this group does molecular pounds and they did AI and they said, hey, let's get AI to create all these really positive molecular compounds that we can start to use to, to uh, address other diseases and everything. And that it did a great job at that. And then they said, what would happen if we made it the inverse, right? Instead of a positive effect, a negative effect. And so in less than like 36 hours, it came up with things, compounds that they never even thought of that are scary. Right. And so that's the that's the juxtaposition that we have to understand on AI and, and making sure that, um, you know, we're going down the right path and we understand the guardrails of keeping it on the, the positive side of effect and not the negative side of effect. So, yeah, yeah AI is the one thing that keeps me up at night. <laughs> no, I like the way you outlined that. I think that everyone's trying to really understand the strategic parameters that we need to think through on that topic. So it's well said. Netta, I mean, the world that you play in is certainly critical today, but I'm always trying to understand why people end up doing what they do. What was it about really computer science and really working with data and security that drew you in and drives your passion? Yeah, I mean, once a nerd, always a nerd, I think, or a geek, whichever one you want to call it. No, I, and, and I embrace that. Like, I've always been the person that likes to figure out how to fix it, right? And inevitably in security, that's what you're trying to do. And IT, that's what you're trying to do is make it better, fix it, make it perform better. Um, but I also think, you know, I, I don't know if it's a little bit of the Philly in me, you know, being the underdog, being a woman, like, it, there's not a lot of women in this, in this genre. So... It, you know, I, I've had to, you know, come up and, and really be on my game and really show that, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I know what the, the topics are, but I like the challenge of it, right? I like the challenge of not only being a woman in the environment, and now thankfully I can reach back and help others come along, other women, but I like the challenge of getting the business to understand, hey, that sounds like a great idea. And yes, that will make a lot of money, but we have to do it in a secure way and coming to that middle ground. So maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment because sometimes those, those go round and round, but I really enjoy bringing those, those parts together and, and being able to deliver value, right? And I think that's the, the view that I take that's different is let me show you the value that we can deliver in, in to the organization and to your organization with just a few tweaks that will make it more secure. So, yeah, and it's it's a really interesting point you you made. I mean, I would say I I sense I feel that we're seeing more senior executives in CISO type roles that are women, although perhaps, you know, not as fast as I would have expected. And so I think it's great that, you know, you and others that are really kind of key to be growing this space are doing that and mentoring going forward. As we look out now, though, I mean, it's been an interesting time in 2023. I feel like all the things that we've been talking about for ages on the digital side are moving forward. 
But, you know, it's been an interesting economic environment for sure. When you look into 2024, what does the landscape look like from your perspective and where does security play and the work that you're doing in supporting those efforts? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. I mean, you know, I wish I had my, you know, magic eight ball and I could shake it and say, you know, this is what it's definitely going to look like because I think I have an idea, but we all know that that landscape changes so rapidly. Um, you know, in, in my view, it is really driving on visibility within our, our ecosystem and being able to tie our reinvention of ourselves to our customer to make sure that they feel secure and, and engaged in, you know, when they are shopping at Belk and when they are doing interacting with Belk and, and our special events and our sales and everything. I think that is one of the most important things. I think, you know, being able to connect those two together, security and our customers is, is important for the organization. But I also think it's about the pace at which organizations are moving, right? You know, we used to have, you know, even just a couple of years ago, you you used to have at least, um, you know, two, three, four months of, of, of lead time to get things up and running. And now we've compressed that even farther, especially in retail, because, you know, you go into a freeze and you don't make any changes and you get organized for the first, you know, month or so. So you're really down to two months tops to really be able to deliver on really big programs. So it's about working on the efficiencies of automating a lot of those day-to-day tasks so I can move my organization up the value chain and, and get in front of things earlier to be able to help us. So that's really what I'm looking at. I love the way you describe Netta, the understanding of the customer and the customer path, kind of marrying that with the work that you do. I don't hear that that much. And I think that you're absolutely spot on because for the end customer, security matters. You know, security matters for your company, obviously. It matters from so many dimensions, so many different stakeholders. And so understanding that story, that arc, that journey and is really, really, really key. If someone wanted to learn more about what you and Belk are doing on the uh, CISO side of things, where's the best place to reach you? Yeah, I mean, you can reach me at my LinkedIn or you can reach me. Usually LinkedIn is the best way to get a hold of me. But then also, if you want to know anything that's going on about Belk, uh, belk belk.com, we're hiring, we're doing lots of great things. Um, So, you know, if and if you reach out to me, I'll be glad to help any way I can and give you any information that I can give. Well, that's great. I mean, Netta, it's been amazing to talk with you. I wish you a safe and secure holiday retail season ahead of you. And it's been great speaking with you. We've been speaking with Netta Pitt today. She is the Chief Information Security Officer at Belk, which is a major retailer here in the United States. Netta, thank you so much for being on the show. And we look forward to having you back. Thank you so much, Ben. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.